I welcome you all to the bench as fellow lawyers. This is indeed a great honor and a privilege that you have had. I came to this bench by a quite a different route. I was born and raised in Thailand. My parents were missionaries who lived there for 35 years, and I spent my first 18 years there going to a mission-run boarding school in South Vietnam and later when the war became too serious in Malaysia. That background actually gave me a great a training for this position because I got a chance to grow up in countries without freedom of speech, without freedom of religion, without freedom of press, where one branch of government was totally dominant over the others. And it gave me such appreciation for the wonderful things we have in this country that so many of us take for granted. I was very privileged to be able to come to this country to go to school. I came here when I was 18. I had about $500. I, my parents still had to stay in Thailand. And yet in this country, you have the opportunity to become whatever you want because our government and our society affords so much uh, aid to those who want to get there. Some of you have gotten here because you've worked hard like me and had no help financially or otherwise. Some of you have had parents who made great sacrifices to make sure you got an education, often one that they never had. And some of them are fortunate and were able to afford to give you that great college experience. However, whichever way you got here, you have this wonderful opportunity now to do something with the education you have. You may want to blaze the corporate world, or rise in politics, or defend human rights and injustice, or fight battles for the poor and the downtrodden, or just live a quiet life of satisfaction and good work. Whatever you do, I want to leave you with three challenges. And some of those are challenges that you've heard before that I will be repeating because they bear repeating because they are so important. And some of them may have a little bit different twist. The first one, however, is a little different. It's live your life with balance. Do not make the billable God your the billable hour your God. Well, maybe if you're unmarried and have no friends, you can. But otherwise, don't do that because your friends and your family are really the mainstay of your life. I have watched lawyers rise in big firms to watch the firm disintegrate or work their tail off for a major corporate client to just have the company sold and find a new attorney to represent them. I have had attorneys say to me, I've never taken a vacation in five years and expect sympathy, and I don't feel any for them. I feel the sympathy for their family. They say they're doing it to provide for their family, but they only see them for 15 minutes at night. That family is what is going to be there when everything else is gone. And while you've heard wonderful speeches about working hard and being successful, don't ever lose sight of that fact. And if there's nothing else to remember, the one tip I want to leave you from that point is always treat your family better than you would have treated the judge, the client, or your boss. It's easy to come home and kick the dog and yell at your kids because you've had a terrible day and the judge has made you have a horrible schedule and the client won't cooperate. But if you don't say those things or wouldn't say those things to your client, your judge, your boss, don't ever say them to your family. The second one you've heard often, giving back to your community, you have a ticket to a monopoly. Nobody else is going to be able to practice law, and we as a court defend that right vigorously. But because you have that monopoly, there will be people who have needs that won't be able to fulfill those needs, that will need your help but can't afford your help. Now, representing family and friends does not qualify as pro bono, by the way. These are people who are in true need. So use your time to give freely to those that cannot afford you. And also in the many ways you've heard spoken, that you can be a leader in your community. Everybody's going to look up to you now as a lawyer. And so you can lead on a corporate board or your soccer coach or your charity or in your church. You have a real opportunity to be a leader and to use that ticket, that monopoly, to great advantage for the benefit of others. And finally, remember that your client is more important than winning. I have so often seen that fact lost. I have had remember a particular case where it was a uh, family practice of doctors who had dra drafted a, a non-compete and a buyout agreement and purchased insurance, but someone messed it up and it ended up going to the corporation and not to the widow as they intended. And the young attorney wanted to litigate that case because they had a winner because the contract language is very clear. 
But fortunately, the partner knew that to do that would forever damage the relationships between those parties, and that giving that up was worth more than winning. You might look at our ADR, alternative dispute resolution. You may look at settlement. You may look at simply sometimes telling your client, no, this is not the best thing for you. But do not let the fact of winning blind you to the needs of your client and how that may be so more important. You have this wonderful opportunity in your hands. I hope that you will always make every decision one that you can be proud of, ethically, morally, and legally, and that you can always look back and say, what I did was the right thing. Go forth and do good works. <laughs>